The end of World War II led to the beginning of a new war, the Cold War, between the communists and the non-communists. Communism got its start in 1917 when Russia backed out of World War I. The communist movement was started by the Bolshevik Party, and they came to power when the Red Russians defeated the White Russians in the Russian Civil War. The main figure in starting this was Vladimir Lenin, but he was succeeded by Joseph Stalin in 1941. Another big communist movement started in China when Mao Zedong overthrew Chiang Kai-shek and China became communist. Chiang Kai-shek and his followers fled to the island of Taiwan. This can be seen today as Taiwan still claims to be the original China. Though they claim to be communist, leaders like Mao and Stalin are closer to totalitarian than communist, meaning that they rule with absolute authority, similar to Adolf Hitler and other dictators. This misuse of communism is why many people today still hate communism. During the Cold War, the non-communist forces were referred to as NATO, and the communist forces were the Warsaw Pact states. The non-communists are shown in blue and are primarily in West Europe and the Americas, while the communists are in red and orange and are prim primarily in East Europe and Asia. The main two combatants in the war were the U.S. and the USSR. The U.S. and the USSR both had large amounts of nuclear weapons. The Cold War never turned hot, which is good, because if it had, both sides would have likely used nuclear weapons, which have the power to destroy the world. Nuclear weapons were first used by the U.S. to end World War II and have devastating power, enough to destroy entire cities with a single bomb. Even though the U.S. and the USSR never fought each other directly, they would sometimes support other countries. For example, when communist North Korea invaded the non-communist South Korea, the USSR backed the North and the U.S. backed the South. This was the Korean War and it ended in a draw, which can still be seen today since there's still North and South Korea. A similar situation occurred when, North, when the communist North Vietnamese invaded the democratic South Vietnamese. This was the Vietnam War, which the U.S. directly fought in, and ended in a win for the, Nor for the communist North Vietnamese. It can still be seen today as Vietnam is still unified under communism. Another situation similar to this was when the USSR invaded Afghanistan and the U.S. backed the Afghan natives by giving them weapons. This ended in defeat for the USSR. The Cold War formally came to an end in 1991 with the collapse of the Soviet Union and resulted in a victory for the United States since the Soviet Union collapsed. Another movement that began around the end of World War II was colonial independence, or colonies trying to gain freedom from European nations. An example was the first war in Vietnam where the Vietnamese revolted against their French colonial rulers. This movement was big in Africa since most of Africa was still colonies under European nations. Unfortunately, however, when most colonies gained their independence, they kept their colonial borders. This led to infighting, which led to things like the genocide in Rwanda and Darfur. Imperialism officially came to an end in 1990 when Nambia, the last colony in Africa, gained its independence. One side effect of the Cold War was new technology. The space race was a competition between the U.S. and the USSR to see who could reach the moon first. This was responsible for many great strides forward in technology. For example, Sputnik, which was the first satellite. This led to the communication and weather satellites that we use today in our everyday lives.